driver is uh, showing some obscure driving, possibly intoxicated. Currently doing 45 miles an hour. Zone through here is 25. Oh! Subject just hit the curb. Correction speed limit is 15. Place your vehicle in the park and go ahead and turn it off for me. No, park. Oh, it, it isn't parked yet. Okay, turn right. off your engine. Go ahead and set your keys on the dash for me. All right. What's your guys' names? Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian. Okay. What's going on? How can we cry? I'm just crying. We've been fighting. To be clear, <coughs> Gabby had four parents. They weren't step parents. She had four parents that genuinely loved her as if she was her own. And this man is one. Of them. Hello, thank you all for joining us. I am Dr. Brent Blue, uh, uh, Teton County, Wyoming coroner. After a detailed investigation by our forensic pathologist, our anthropologist and local law enforcement uh, with assistance from the FBI, the Teton County Coroner Office is following the following verdict in the death of Gabrielle Lenora Petito. We hereby find the cause and manner of death to be the cause death by strangulation and manner is homicide. By Wyoming state statute, no other information will be released about the autopsy. The only thing that is released in the state of Wyoming is cause and manner of death. I think they said they can't hear you. Just one second. Should I start over then? Sure. Thank you for joining us. Sorry about the, the audio issue. I'm Dr. Brent Blue, uh, Teton County, Wyoming coroner. After a detailed investigation by our forensic pathologist, our anthropologist, and local law enforcement, with assistance from the FBI, the Teton County Coroner's Office is following the following verdict. In the manner of death of Gabrielle Lenora Petito, we find the cause and manner to be cause death by strangulation and manner uh, is homicide. By Wyoming state statute, only the cause and manner of death are released. Their uh, autopsy findings and photographs and that sort of material is not released uh, by state statute. And I'll be glad to entertain uh, some questions at this time. Hi, Brian, this is Alex with the News and Guide. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm curious whether you're able to pinpoint a date of death and when, and if you know whether or when Gabby's remains will be returned to her family. The, the remains have been uh, 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 returned to the mortuary here, and the mortuary is dealing with the family at this time as far as the disposition of the remains. As far as the uh, time of death, uh, we are estimating three to four weeks from the time that uh, the body was found. Uh, that is actually determined more by the uh, law enforcement folks than the uh, uh, than our office. Chris Vivian, you are able to ask your question. I, I, what's the question? I didn't hear a question.
Uh, Chris, I believe that you are muted. If you can unmute yourself. Okay, it's it's John Walsh from In Pursuit with John Walsh on Discovery ID. Dr. Blue, thank you for your time. I think everybody in the world believes that Brian Laundrie killed Gabby. Um, with your extensive work on the body, are you sure that it's Brian uh, Laundrie? And will the FBI issue a nationwide homicide uh, uh, warrant now that they know the cause of death? Uh, we are only tasked with the determination of cause and manner of death. Who committed the homicide is up to law, law enforcement. And I cannot answer the question about uh, the FBI. You would have to contact them. Jeremy Copas, you are now allowed to ask your question. Yes, hello, doctor. Um, if you could um, please, can you comment on any other bruising maybe um, on the body that possibly was um, healing, possibly older um, bruises or cuts that that might have um, been healing over the last couple of weeks before um, her passing? By Wyoming state statute, no other information about the autopsy is released, just the cause of death. Hi there, this is Heather Lee, a reporter at ABC Action News in Tampa, Florida. I just wanted to know if you could explain um, why it took about a month for this process to finish. Um, I think a lot of people were hoping that they would learn this information sooner. So I just think if you could just explain the process and why it took a month. Well, the main reason was uh, that we were very exacting in our examination and the detail by which that examination was done. We were waiting for uh, 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 various uh, specialists to come in and, and help us with this investigation. We were waiting on toxicology uh, to be returned. And it was just a matter of making sure we had everything right. Thank you. Is there another question? Brian Enton. I believe you're unmuted right now. Okay. Uh, Steve Fabian. Yes, hi, doctor, how are you? I am curious if any DNA samples were taken from Gabby's remains, and also, if the body was intact, are you able to tell us the condition of Gabby's remains? Uh, I can tell you the DNA samples were taken by law enforcement, and all I can tell you about remains is that uh, the body was outside for three to four weeks. Chris Vivian, do you have your hand up? Was that a question? I, I didn't hear the question there. Question. Dr. Blue? Yes. It's John Walsh again from In Pursuit with John Walsh. Um, you will probably be the most important witness at the trial. And I asked you before how confident you feel that Brian uh, Laundrie and, you know, we, they use the semantics. He was a person of interest. I'm old school. He was the only suspect he ever. And um, I, I, uh, I just wonder, you're going to be the most important guy at the trial, probably. Um, do you have any doubts it's Brian Laundrie? I can't make any comment about uh, uh, any suspects because we are not involved in that part of the investigation. We are only involved in the investigation of the uh, body of the deceased. So uh, who committed the homicide is really to be determined by law enforcement. 
Right, but I, I thank you for your hard work. And I, I always say in so many cases I've been involved in, let the pathologists and the coroner do their work no matter how long it takes. So I think you've probably done a really good job on this case. Thank you for your time. Hey there, doctor. This is Rochelle Aline with ABC Action News in Tampa. Just a quick question. Can you kind of walk us through uh, the process to how you arrived at this specific manner of death? In the state of Wyoming, there are four possibilities for uh, the, of a manner of death. They are homicide, suicide, accident, and natural. And those are the four choices. Uh, when we do an investigation, we look at, at the crime scene or the scene of the death. Uh, the scene of the body, the condition of the body, uh, and findings at autopsy and toxicology. And uh, that is how we arrive at the uh, manner of death. So it's, uh, it really depends on lots of different circumstances. Dr. Stephen Fabian, again from Inside Edition, can you tell us if the body was buried when it was discovered or it was if the body was on the surface? I, I can't tell you that that uh, would be something you'd have to ask the FBI because we're not allowed to release that information. Um, Kelly Vaughn. Do you have a question, Kelly Vaughn? Um, we have Brian Enting in the chat who has a question. What's your question, Brian? Was there any impact on her body from weather or wild animals in the National Park? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Was there any impact on her body from weather or wild animals in the national park uh, all i can really comment about that is that her body was outside in the wilderness for three to four weeks ksl assignment you are unmuted ksl assignment Hello, uh, Dan Rascone here from uh, KSL TV in Salt Lake. Dr. Blue, can you tell us at all whether or not, was it believed that she was murdered there at that location or does it any indication that her body was drugged there or taken there or can you give us any indication there? Uh, I can't comment on that. That would be something you'd have to speak with the law enforcement or the FBI. Matthew Sella. Matthew Sella, do you have a question? Hey, Dr. Blue, it's uh, it's actually Jimmy from DailyMail.com in New York here. What were the results of the toxicology reports? And is there any suggestion that Gabby had any drugs in her system? And if so, what were they? The results of the toxicology are not public knowledge by why so I can't comment about that. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from the chat. Uh, was Gabby Petito pregnant? She was not pregnant. Thomas Tope. Hi, Doctor. Um, my question, did you seek the advice of a forensic entomologist or forensic botanist during the course of your investigation? Uh, the FBI has sent materials to uh, a forensic entomologist. WPBF 25 News. Hi, doctor. This is Terry Parker from WPBF in Palm Beach County, Florida. 
I'm wondering if you said you were very thorough in this autopsy and examination. Could you give us an example of the type of test and um, uh, analysis as you performed? Uh, this autopsy uh, included a whole body CAT scan, uh, a, a examination by a forensic uh, pathologist, an examination by a forensic uh, anthropologist, uh, and uh, toxicology uh, uh, evaluation. So uh, it was we pretty much covered all the bases. Jeremy Kopis. Yes, uh, doctor, thank you for taking the question again. You uh, mentioned that um, strangulation is the cause of death. Um, can you talk about how you received, how you came to that conclusion? I cannot. That is part of the autopsy findings uh, and is not uh, discoverable by Wyoming statute. Was there any other cause of death um, that you were, that was po a possibility in this case? Well, we look at all causes, uh, all possibilities uh, where we try to determine cause of death, uh, but that uh, this is the, the cause of death that we determined. I have a question um, from chat. It is, was the manner of death obvious? Strangulation marks, bones, injured neck. Uh, the man, uh, nothing is obvious in a situation like this. So uh, detailed analysis was used both to determine manner and cause of death. I can't go into details on how we made those uh, decisions. Kristen Thorne. Yes, hi, Dr. Kristen Thorne with WABC in New York. Could you just please repeat about how long you believe the body was out there? Unfortunately, the, the last time you spoke, you just didn't get a good uh, film shot of you saying that. Would you mind repeating that? Uh, our initial determination is the body uh, was in the wilderness for three to four weeks. Thank you. Jorge Fritz Gibbon. Uh, you have to unmute. I believe you're still muted. Sorry about that. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Blue. Um, relating back to the uh, date of death, is there a date listed on the death certificate? Uh, the death certificate has not been completed at this time. And the uh, de death certificates of the state of Wyoming allow for approximate dates and, and uh, uh, variability in those dates. So uh, I doubt, well, there will not be a, a, an exact date of death on the death certificate. Eileen with News 12. Um, hi, doctor. This is Eileen LaPalmer from News 12. Um, we sort of asked it a little bit, but is there a way that you can explain how you know um, that it was strangulation? Um, it, sometimes I know that a hyoid bone, bone could be missing. Is that something that you discovered in this case? I can't comment on that because it would be a finding of, of the autopsy. And as I stated before, in the state of Wyoming, the, the autopsy results are not public knowledge. So then you can't clarify whether it was manual strangulation or with an item, correct? That's correct. Jeremy Kopis. Uh, thanks for making time for us, doctor. Was the entire examination conducted at your lab in Jackson or was Gabby Petito's body uh, shipped to another facility? The examination was done uh, entirely at our uh, board in Teton County, Wyoming. Anna de Greg Greg. Gregorio? <laughs> Gregorio. It's actually a Ashley Banfield with News Nation. Um, doctor, thank you for taking the time to, today. Can I ask you if um, from the very beginning of your process, 
was it obvious that the cause, not the manner, that the cause was strangulation and that you just needed this time to prove it out? Or were you completely unaware from the beginning what the cause of death was for Gabby Petito and had to resolve through a number of puzzle solving manners and other experts to arrive at that um, final um, that final cause determination? In a, in a situation like this, nothing is obvious. And so uh, the cause of death required investigation. Uh, we have a William Walkie. Hey there, Dr. Glue. My name is Will. I'm from uh, KHOL Jacksonville Community Radio here in Jackson. Um, you know, you're a small town coroner here in Western Wyoming. This case got so much national attention, as we can see right now. Can you speak on what it was like doing your job with such a big spotlight on you? Thanks. Well, it was quite the media circus uh, and continues to be. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is only one of uh, many deaths uh, around the country uh, of uh, people who are involved in domestic violence. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, these other deaths do not get as much coverage as this one. I'm assuming that because the deceased was a blogger that this received more coverage uh, than others, but uh, there are a lot of uh, both men and women who have lost their lives that aren't covered with this kind of media attention. Francis DePior. Uh, yes, hello, this is Francis DeFiore from the uh, Port Charlotte Sun. I just want to uh, go back to my previous question, although I imagined your response uh, is there anything you can tell us about uh, how exactly you determined it was a three to four week period uh, before death? I can't go into that kind of information at this time. I understand. Thank you very much. Why don't we, we take have, one more question then? We have the uh, snack squad. Hey, this is Andy Mercado from Mercado Media. Could you go over the length of time the autopsy report took? And thank you for your time, Dr. Blue. Well, uh, the length of time uh, was involved uh, in the sense that uh, we received a report from the investigating and examining forensic pathologist. Uh, we uh, had a report done by our anthropologist and we had uh, toxicology studies uh, that were done uh, in addition to the report from the radiologic studies. So all these came together and that's what uh, uh, took time for us to complete this investigation. Hi, doctor, could you speak to the uh, state of decomposition and did that at all hinder your investigation? No, I can't comment on that. Dr. Blue, would you like to take any more questions? Uh, I, unless there's other specific questions that haven't been answered already, why don't we uh, uh, close this and thank you all very much for, for uh, your participation. And uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, I will not be answering any other detailed questions about the autopsy. As I said, state statute uh, prevents us from doing that. So contacting me by email and phone is not going to reveal any additional information. But thank you for your time, and I appreciate uh, uh, your interest. Dr. Blue, I have one more question. Is there a way to determine if this was accidental or deliberate? You mean in the sense of a homicide? Yes. Uh, that would be up to law enforcement to, to make that determination. Great, thank you. Again, thank you all very much for your time.